Hi kids, I've been struggling for a few weeks to make a video about AI art, more specifically text to image generation. And there's been so many bad hot takes from YouTube chicken littles being paid to tell us the sky is falling. It's the end of artists, the end of art. And my God, people, you need to chill with hyperbole. Y'all sound like absolute morons. Every single one of these people appears to have a Neko cat girl as their avatar, their clones. What the fuck is that even? These people are not paying their rent with this amateur illustration crap. It's so generic and unoriginal. Uh, literally clones. Like, it doesn't get more clone than that. Now, look, look at this. You cannot tell one from the other endless, generic, all the same. And it's not a great aesthetic to begin with. It was cheap illustrations for manga that was 700 pages. They didn't have time to make it complicated. It's an aesthetic only a factory could love. That was disposable pulp illustrations 50 years ago, people. Neko cat girls are not cool. They're conformity. That's not art. They're not artists. They're not even Japanese. Okay, I have to start, apparently, by explaining what art is, because <laughs> y'all don't know. Art is supposed to challenge us with uncertain experiences outside our normal. These are not my definitions, folks. Read a book. Therefore, art has evolved to embrace the avant-garde. It applauds audacity, controversy, even emperor's new clothes when there's nothing there. Art must be a difficult pill to swallow. It must be shocking, hopefully a little offensive, so it gets in the newspapers. It must provoke in new ways that people have never been provoked before. This is the new emotional frontier that the art world explores. It must make you question your beliefs, your fundamental value of everything, Real art is world-shattering. It provokes inside us all a feeling that we struggle to put into words. Again, this is not my definition. This banana is art because it does all of those things universally to everyone as an artist. I have the vocabulary and self-knowledge to put a word to the strong, singular emotion this art makes me feel. But it's doing it. Working as intended. Now, who am I to say such things to you? Well, I'm an artist who uses technology to realize my own aesthetic. My art has been presented at MoMA, New York. My art has been presented at the Whitney, also in New York. My art has been presented at a bunch of other galleries and museums and venues you never heard of, and nobody really cares. I've been a professional artist for decades. When I started crossing over into museum and galleries, because it seemed like that was a logical career path, it was all ego and just about name recognition and no aesthetic. And that's why I don't do the art world anymore. It's all posers, no talent. P.T. Barnum, controversy chasing posers. Okay, that scene was not for me. It's vapid social climbing, and that's where I could never fit in because uh, I don't care what other people think. I do what I do. I follow my aesthetic. I honestly couldn't care less if you like it or not, or if you're offended. That's not my intent, but I don't care. I'm going to push my own boundaries. I'm going to question my own beliefs constantly. I'm going to push myself through new technology and new mediums as they get invented. I'll never stop being an artist. I can't help it. Now that takes a lot of learning, a lot of deconstructing what I think I know, a lot of not just questioning but struggling to find answers, not, not the answer, but an answer that is new, maybe undiscovered. That's what an artist is. Let me give you some advice. You can't be an artist 
and try to impress other people. Those things are sadly mutually exclusive. I did visual interactive installations. I played to the crowd, to their experience, to my own aesthetic. I did not bother to flatter the guy in the suit who runs the gallery or the museum. He's got issues and I don't care. <laughs> I'm not really interested in decorating your hotel lobby with a video installation. I'm not going to get anything from that. It's a service. I don't want to use my art for that. Sure, lobbies should be aesthetically pleasing, duh, but I know the difference in art and decor. Which brings me to what people who are not artists, what they think art is, and there's a word for that, Kitsch. Maybe not what you think. Kitsch comforts us, both in subject and presentation, which is quite polished for what it is. A mass-produced object designed to appeal to the broadest market. Kitsch uses existing beloved culture, sentimentalism, nostalgia. It can have humor. It can remix existing culture without getting too deep. If you've ever been to a Disney store, wall-to-wall -wall kitsch. If you've seen a Disney movie, kitsch. If Disney is involved, it's kitsch. Kitsch was an insult by the avant-gardists. It literally means trash. <laughs> and they listed everything that was wrong with kitsch in an effort to define themselves as better, as not kitsch, as the true art movement. In their opinion, art moves culture forward, kitsch moves culture backwards. Now, they had to admit that while kitsch was not artisan, it was of remarkably high aesthetics, as good as you can get from factory made and assembly lines and labor exploitation. Kitsch appeals to the masses. It was playful. It was silly. It was decorative. And it didn't cost that much. In other words, Kitsch played to the lower class, the unsophisticate. People who prefer the comfort of sentimental nostalgia over being provoked and questioning reality. Go figure. In fact, remixing existing culture is all that Kitsch does. So it's not capable of going somewhere new. Its purpose is to evoke sentimental feelings, but also dazzle you with a ridiculous level of quality, you know, for the price. Kitsch is Hollywood's three-act structure. It's all formula, no risk. It's potato chips. Infinitely consumable, never gets you full. So to summarize, art punks on you and hurts your feelings. It's pretentiously incomprehensible by design. Art is trolling you. Kitsch is your BFF from childhood. It loves all the same stuff you grew up with. Kitsch laughs at your dad jokes. Kitsch can be shared as a meme because you don't need an art degree to understand it. As I said before, these are not my definitions. Well, these are my snarky interpretations of the definition, but these are not my definitions. So go do some research. I know you're not going to read a book. So pop up here to the, to the search bar <laughs> in YouTube. Type in art versus kitsch and two videos. My top two hits for art versus kitsch. They're both good. I recommend you watch them. The first one, uh, I think she's an art teacher, maybe an art student, an educator. Her voice is pleasant. She's not lecturing like me. She explains the historic context in a mostly neutral way, even though the avant-gardists were deliberately offensive towards the bougie-minded, because let's face it, the lower class was never going to appreciate their values, the avant-garde values. Now the irony, the irony, the audacity. <laughs> Avant-gardists put a generic toilet bowl from the corner plumber in an art exhibit. It was a huge sensation. People were offended. Someone went to the gallery and smashed the toilet bowl with a hammer. Today that person would have been hired by the artist. Then the avant-garde turned around and called mass-produced high aesthetic art trash. That's literally all you need to know about the art world. It explains the whole thing, the hypocrisy of it all. And we're still there. 
Things your grandma likes are trash, while real art is ponderous and expensive and aesthetically inexcusable. Now, the second video goes a lot deeper into an art movement from the late 90s. These are artists who, they're artists because they're pushing boundaries, are reclaiming the aesthetics that were destroyed by the avant-garde. They call themselves kitsch artists, and the movement is called Kitsch Revival. They claim the aesthetics that were passed down through the old masters. They study art history. They learn how to make their art visually attractive. And they might even exaggerate these things, creating works that evoke the feeling of seeing an impressive masterwork from the past. So the kitsch revival artists, they appreciate culture. They're not trying to break it. It's art, but with a different set of rules, a different value system. They're still provoking an emotional response, but intentionally a different feeling entirely. Something a bit nostalgic, sentimental, and most of all, just pretty. Now, they're also well aware of how the art world reacts to what they're doing, and deliberately, uh, that's not the audience or the aesthetics they're playing to. They reject the avant-garde and actually blame them for a downturn in aesthetics that has clearly taken place over the last century. I would not call myself kitsch artist. I don't believe in reclaiming hate speech that someone else intended as an insult. I see what they're doing. Kitsch movement is more than just an aesthetic. They're pushing back against a dogma and a power system. They're artists. Now, there's another definition for kitsch, and that's when you appreciate bad art for its irony. You know, this is Velvet Elvis paintings, it's glow-in-the-dark Jesus, it's weird, useless memorabilia like collected plates. <laughs> you can't eat off them, you hang them on the wall, but it's a plate. <sighs> now, this is the kitsch definition for my generation. I think the big name in that ironic... Mm, a kitsch appreciation movement is Ali Willis, who has a literal museum of kitsch. And you can see how that's a different goal altogether. That's not an artist, that's a collector, right? Gen X was a generation that mocked sentimentality and commercialism, so my generation's idea of what kitsch is, it's simultaneously lowbrow and a bad over-the-top aesthetic. Um, just so you don't think the modern kitsch revival movement is about tiki bar Christmas lights or something. Now, when I started trying AI text to image generation, yeah, I struggled with some mixed feelings. I wasn't sure how I thought about it. AI generated objectively attractive aesthetics, but yeah, I'm not into copying other artists' 2D styles. I don't want to Van Gogh my selfies. We already did that, remember? Remember when everyone turned their, sel their selfies into 2D art? We did that already. Now, AI generation is something new. It's not about stealing someone's art style or collaging parts of an image together. Although you wouldn't know it if you read other people's prompts. In fact, the people are putting the what's his name? Greg Rutkowski and trending on art station. When they put that in their prompt, they don't know what they're doing. They're just copy pasting from someone else's prompt. They don't even know who that guy is. I swear to you. Yeah. Most people using AI right now, they have no taste. I'm not saying they have bad taste, just no taste. They have no understanding of art history. They're clearly not artists themselves. That's fine. That's fine. But I'm not going to get much from that kind of a community. I'm not going to learn. There is also... Yeah, a bizarre amount of magical thinking that betrays that these people aren't on any journey of self-enlightenment. They're not capable of it. I'm sorry. That's 
that's my observation. And also, male immature sexism is alive and well, and it's still a binary. It's virgin and whore, but their names are updated to Emma Watson and Megan Fox. I don't want to know this about you people. Don't share your bougie ass elf porn. It's awful. Keep it to yourself. Some things need to remain private, not for the reasons you think. We're not prudes. You just have an insultingly stunted sexuality. Try harder, bro. Now these AI hot take clones. Oh, they're ridiculous. I'm not even going to deconstruct their arguments, even though I could be funny about it because stupid doesn't deserve a thoughtful response. They insult me. They insult my intelligence. So I insult them back the end. It doesn't have to get any deeper than that. I have a limited patience for social media conspiracy monitoring. I had talked to my sister in Texas over the weekend and she used up all that conspiracy tolerance in about 20 minutes. Three conspiracies in a row, each dumber than the last and each canceling out the others. If you apply one ounce of logic, there is no horseshoe theory, self-serving delusional bullshit just always sounds like self-serving delusional bullshit. These AI hot takes are gatekeeping by people with neck or cat girl avatars who are not artists and they're not even Japanese. Do not take art advice from a neck or cat girl. There's nothing on this planet more conformist, more generic, more pathetically bereft of any originality. Nothing more interesting, uninteresting than the 50 year old Japanese sexism that you've made the avatar of your life. Ah, these people are losers. Goodbye. Bye. Glad you're being left behind. Don't bother responding with more hot, bad hot takes in my comments. I already said them all out of fucks for you. I'll just block you. No one will see your comments and I don't care. For everyone who is sane, <laughs> and maybe a little overwhelmed by all this nonsense. Whether you're using AI text to image generation or not, you can't escape it. So please just watch some of those two videos on art versus kitsch. Both made a lot of light bulbs go off in my head. Uh, I recognized a lot of what I didn't like about AI art. For me, it was never the technology. My art is pretty technical to begin with. What I didn't like, I couldn't reconcile with what I did like. So it was a real mixed message. I wasn't sure what, but that's on me. I just had to stop and think. I had to deconstruct. I had to go back and do some research on art history. I had to examine what my expectations were and what I thought other people should be doing as opposed to what they were actually doing. So I had to admit, I'm a snob in my own way. I have lots of prejudices. I'm a product of my generation. I have aesthetic opinions. What I'm looking for in an art tool is not harmed by what other people do for fun. That doesn't hurt me. Kitsch and art, they coexist. Not kitchen art, kitsch and art. <laughs> They coexist. They they feel like opposites on a spectrum wide apart, but they're not. They're not mutually exclusive. They coexist. Nostalgia is not always bad. Art isn't about aesthetics alone. There's a saying that all great works have some art and some kitsch together in balance. And honestly, I think that's true. AI is a tool. And a lot of people have no taste. <laughs> These things are not related, but they also coexist. And, uh, uh, you know, learning this, watching this art versus kitsch, it helped, it helped me put the AI art debate into context. But we've done this before. A hundred years ago, to be honest. If those Neko Cat Girl clones were real artists, They'd be curious about the world and the world and art history, but they're not artists. They're mediocre illustrators making kitsch. They're not breaking new ground. That's not the goal. They're not artists. Okay, wait, wait, wait. One important thing that I learned in the second video 
uh, they said that people who love kitsch, unironically, you know, the, the sentimental the fan art, the memes, and the lemon with the sunglasses, they don't know it's kitsch. Okay, to them it's just art. They, they're using the same words. It means something different. It's the same word. And they think it means the big art word, but I just told you the big art word is... So afterwards I felt more reasonable about this technology. I understand that people in my AI discard group, they do not have an artist mentality. They don't have the same goals I do. That does not harm me. They would not be interested in what I'm doing either, probably. All right, quick recap. Art values originality and new experiences. Kitsch values aesthetics and associated memories. Art is about the present, the now, the bleeding edge. It's ugly and rude. Kitsch is about timelessness and remixing culture and fan art and fun. Art is self-expression, the artist's self. Kitsch is impersonal. You don't actually see the artist. You probably don't even see the art. You just feel the emotion and the nostalgia. That means it's working. These things sound contradictory, but they're not mutually exclusive. And AI has nothing to do with it. There is no make art button. And there's still no make art button on its own, the AI will make kitsch lowest common denominator and trying to be aesthetically pleasing for everyone. It does that on its own. That's what it's designed to do. I actually have to fight the AI. I have to tame it. I have to expand my knowledge and vocabulary and research dead French people's names to tease out a prompt to persuade the AI to combine specific things that do not belong together. In other words, something new. I have to force the AI to create something new, something that defies its rules of known reality. It doesn't do that on its own, because that's not the goal. Now, the interesting thing to me is there is no way that we have seen everything the even the existing AIs can do, much less we're going to have another few years of AI coming and it's going to get better and better. It's been like, uh, you know, a freight train, runaway freight train. I can't keep up. That doesn't stop me from getting involved and in learning, okay? The, like I said, the interesting thing to me is there's no way that we've seen everything the existing AIs can do. We're just in a geeky toy phase, soon to be in the corporate sellout phase. But it's language. And language is kind of infinite. I mean, you know, not quite, but kind of infinite. Like, you can... It's not going away. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's not going away. And there's a lot more to discover. So it shouldn't go away. All right. To all these bad takes out there, disingenuous crap takes from people who don't make art and honestly couldn't if they tried. They're not earning a living making those bad illustrations. They're sponsored on YouTube. <laughs> Working as an artist. They should feel threatened because everyone can do what they do now. They learned a little skill and now they need to go and learn some more skills because that's life. If they weren't threatened, they could improve their lives because AI was made for them, their taste. It's kitsch. AI is for them, not for me. I have to struggle with it. <laughs> to get actual art, I have to confuse the AI. I have to upset its norms. I have to push it out of its comfort zone. In other words, I'm an artist. <laughs> 